Hello everyone and welcome back to In the Greenhouse, the relaxing little behind the scenes series here with Siri as we just have some fun talking about some personal questions, some goals, some hopes, some dreams for the future, what's going on behind the scenes with our series and our channel and community in general. We get to learn a little bit more about me, a little bit more about you, and we also have the wonderful pleasure of having all of these amazing plants to play with. Oh my goodness, you guys, last time just blew my mind away blew my mind away that we ended up with another one of the mythical rare plants and that we ended up with so many cool plants. I mean, look at all of these. But now we are, oops, I think that was a healthy branch. Sorry, little fern. <laughs> Got a little over eager. I'm sorry, little fern. Uh, but yes, now we're a little bit full up on seeds. So our goal this time, if I can get, just get out of there, get out of there, dead leaf, bad dead leaf. Our goal this time is to grow a bunch of these little ones and ship them out so we can get them off and out of here and hopefully clear up some seed storage space because as you can see we are full to the brim and I've been working really hard to try to drag down all of the purebred seeds that we know what they are there we go and we know that there's only like a certain number of them let's see I didn't put that right there like we know what they are, uh, we know that they're rare, and I'm trying to pull all of those seeds down into here so that hopefully all these seeds will be ones that we can like rotate out more often. But with over 500 different plants in this game, we're gonna have to eventually admit that there's not enough seed storage space and end up with some fresh, like just end up losing some seeds and focusing on others. But that is why you can buy seeds uh, from our little imported seed section. And I actually raided this section for all of these cactus seeds. So I wanna see what those cactus seeds grow into but first we need to get these guys out of here so there's a couple fertilizer bombs to help them grow let's put some insta grow on them oh beautiful just gorgeous just gorgeous lovely 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 all right and then let us get these guys out the door and you know what we might crossbreed this venomous maple because we've never had a venomous maple before and that pear cactus dang it no <laughs> Yeah, we've had the pear cactus, but let's try crossbreeding the pear cactus and the maple just to see what happens. While we pop in, oh, and I love this plant. Tell me we have that rare oak somewhere. All right, let's see. Not there. Ah, oh, there it is. Good. So we do have one of those seeds. Sell these guys. They've been going fast, so I'm going to turn up the price a little bit more. Is that everyone who can sell? Ah, oh, no, that's why. All right. Nope, nope. We're keeping you. There. Yeah, it's been amazing that we've found so many of the plants. It makes me so excited. You know, you would think that in my life, I'm surrounded by plants every day. I water my garden every day. I'm working on some fun new crafts of gathering some of the real moss and uh, real little rocks and things that I find on my hikes here. Not too much of it, of course. You never want to take and exploit too much from an ecosystem. But I've been working on gathering some of the pieces uh, so that I can make little like artistic terrariums. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, I've been thinking of doing really fun things like making uh, like Totoro from the Totoro Miyazaki movie or making the Kodoma from the uh, the no not Nausicaa. <laughs> Oh my gosh, how could I forget the name of it? It's because I'm having trouble with the English name. Um, it's another Miyazaki movie with the deer and the giant boars. And you guys will know what I'm talking about. The Kodoma from there, the little tree spirits. I want to make like the Kodoma and put the little tree spirits inside of some little terrariums and like put them on our Etsy shop and give them away as presents. So I'm really looking forward to that too. Oh, it's just all so exciting. I love... I'm so grateful and I love so much that I have the opportunity to share my creations with all of you. So thank you so much. And as always, if you guys make art, please share it with our community. Put it on our Facebook page. Send it to me in a tweet and I'll retweet it. Um, when we get the form going, I'm going to specifically make a sub form where you're allowed to show off your creations, be it another YouTube channel, be it um, like art and other things be it just pictures of your animals, you know what I mean? Or poems or fan fiction. I want you to be able to show off your creativity. That's the most amazing thing. Watching other people be creative and adventurous and imaginative is what helps spread it. It's it's this 
burning fire that just gives back what you pour into it. So I love it, I love it, I love it. And I love being able to share what I'm so passionate and creative about with you guys. Cause anytime you, you just enjoy that feedback, you feel like you have so many friends. And I hope that some of you can feel like that with our community, if not as richly and intensely as we feel with real life friends or with friends that we know very intimately and very well, then still I hope you guys can feel it just in, a, in enough of a way to spark your curiosity and spark your sense of passion for whatever you love doing. And holy moly, we've been selling so many of the plants already. That's awesome. So I'm finally going to focus and do my best to get through a few of your questions. <laughs> Thank you so much for all the questions you've left. I've actually batch recorded quite a few of these episodes today. Uh, probably six because <laughs> I've been so hyper and excited. So if I haven't gotten to your question that you've asked a few episodes ago yet, that's because you haven't asked it yet. I know that seems weird because in your perspective you asked days ago, but from my perspective these aren't even released. So I'm not ignoring you and it's gone on the list and I'm trying to get through some of the other things on the list. So let's see. Let me see. Let me see. There's some really great ones too. Like Lee. Lee, thank you for your patience. I know you've been waiting for me to answer the very awesome question of if I could have any dragon from How to Train Your Dragon, what would it be? And Lee would personally like a fireworm queen. And that was a great question because I've seen How to Train Your Dragon and I've seen How to Train Your Dragon 2. And when I was a nanny, I caught some of the episodes that were on TV. The kids weren't really that interested in How to Train Your Dragon. They were more interested in the Wild Kratts um, or Justice League. And that might have been my fault <laughs> for, for them being into Young Justice. Uh, I was pretty passionate about Young Justice. And by the way, look at this fur. This is a new variety of fern, absolutely beautiful. We're gonna propagate it. I just have to, oh, it's gorgeous. And then we're gonna put some of these cactuses away. But yeah, um, I, I've seen How to Train Your Dragon and I've seen How to Train Your Dragon too, but I hadn't really ever thought about like, if I could have one of those dragons, what would it be? So that's a really fun question. And I ended up looking up the Dragonpedia because there's a whole bunch of these different types of dragons. And I ended up looking up the Dragonpedia on the How to Train Your Dragon website. And I was surprised there's like 30 different types. That is creativity. Like we were just talking about, that's like creativity at the max right there. I love seeing that kind of stuff. When I ran my old uh, Harvest Moon Fantasy role-playing form, we had a wiki and we would make dozens and dozens of, of mythical creatures ourselves and it was really fun to add to it and that's what it reminds me of so let me see let me grow some of these plants I looked up all the different dragons and I have narrowed it down to three types of dragons that I would choose from if I had the opportunity and the dragons I would choose from are the cloud jumper which is one of the more famous dragons since it's in the second movie um, let's go ahead and vapor bomb these or vapor bomb oh my goodness yeah, it is vapor bomb. Vapor bomb just sounds so violent as something to do to the plants for a second. But the cloud jumper is the dragon that has like the owl shaped head, and it's the dragon that belongs to one of the major main characters in the movie. And I won't say who because it spoils things for those of you who haven't seen it yet. Uh, and it's really beautiful. I love its its X wing shape. I love the fact it has like an owl shape to it. The way it rotated its head, the personality, and actually, cloud jumper is the name of the specific dragon. His name is Cloud Jumper, and they're called Storm Cutters. So I mean to say Storm Cutters. They're the type of dragon. Beautiful X-shaped wings, beautiful like rotating head and owl shape, inquisitive, smart. Uh, they seem to be more of the highly cognitive of the dragons from How to Train Your Dragon, if that makes sense. So I really like them. Oh my goodness, and I really like these plants. <laughs> Oh, they're just so beautiful. Look at all these plants. I think the fertilizer bomb actually works a lot better. Um, so we're going to start fertilizing bomb, fertilizer bombing things more often. Um, also sell this. Let's get these over here. Oh my goodness. They're just gorgeous. Come on. I'm going to charge more for these. There we go. Uh, but yes, sorry, I'm getting distracted. But I looked up some of the other dragons, and the Sea Shocker is a two-headed ocean-going dragon that is absolutely fascinating to me. It can cut through ice with its, uh, with its back wings, it seems, and I thought it was really beautiful, and I've always kind of liked the two-headed dragons quite a bit. 
so I think I would I would pick a sea shocker uh, if I couldn't have a a storm cutter. But then I also fell in love with the snap trapper, which is basically like a four-headed Venus flytrap dragon, and that's a plant dragon, and that's like unfair. If you if you present me a plant dragon, then how am I going to resist that? But ideally, it would be either either the storm cutter or the sea shocker. And I would probably just keep a bunch of snap trappers like in a, in a big island somewhere, like an island garden or something. Uh, so that was really fun. And it was just really fun to take some time to look up the how to train your dragon dragons and, and see what kind I might be interested in. And holy crap, look at how like, full of flowers this fern plant is. That's just amazing. <sighs> Anyway, thank you very much, Lee. That was a totally awesome question. And then another fun question is from Dandy. Have I ever played any of the Mario games? And if so, who's my favorite Mario character? And I have indeed played the Mario games. I grew up playing them on the SNES. And my mom and I used to do that. She swears she's never played video games in her life now. And she's like, I don't understand why people spend all their time playing video games. But, <laughs> you know, this coming from the woman who is addicted to Bejeweled and like, like uh, all those other little like Palm Pilot hand pad little games that you can do. I, I get so many requests on Facebook from her for for like the, the Candy Crush. That's the one. That's the one that she's addicted to is Candy Crush. <laughs> So, um, Mom and I used to play Mario on the SNES, and I think my favorite character is probably Yoshi. Because, I mean, who doesn't like Yoshi? And I love all the eggs. I love all the different colored Yoshis and the different colored eggs. There's something about Yoshi eggs I just find absolutely adorable. So, I would say definitely Yoshi, because Yoshi's cool, and I love Yoshi Island, and I've played quite a few of the different Mario games. Um, but weirdly enough, Mario Parties are always my favorite, because my sister and I have a blast playing Mario Party together. Uh, it doesn't really get boring for us, and I love those kinds of mini games. I really do. I love the mini games in Mario Party a lot, and I love playing Mario Party, and I love like the mini games in Pokemon Stadium, for example, are what I love the most. <laughs> I love the mini games in Pokemon Stadium more than I love any of the other aspects of like actually battling the Pokemon. That didn't interest me as much as like that Lickitung sushi mini game in the, the 64 version of Pokemon Stadium. I loved that. That was just so fun. Making my little Lickitung eat all that sushi. So <laughs> I'm a big Mario Party fan. I kind of want to play it now, even if it was just myself, because Mario Party can really do damage to your, <laughs> your relationships. So I don't think I want to get Darling down here to play it. I don't think he'd appreciate that very much. Um, yeah, so I, I do enjoy it. Maybe we'll do, once I can afford to get the, um, the capture device for consoles, maybe we'll do some mini games like that now and then. Uh, instead of like just doing Minecraft mini games, we can do mini games on, on the consoles. We can do like Mario mini games and things like that. I think that would be really fun. Also, I don't know if people are going to buy that cactus, but we're going to sit here for just a minute longer and see. And then Kit Kat asked, Hey Siri, if you could tame any wild animal and keep it with you happy and healthy, what would it be? Personally, I would like a Siberian tiger. That's pretty cool, Kit Kat, and it's a great theoretical question. So taking aside all of the ethics and all of the other things, if I could have any animal to keep it with me, what would it be? A kiwi bird. <laughs> I love birds! I just do! And it's so weird. I didn't used to be a bird person at all. I actually was like a 100% cat person, 100% like other animal sort of person. And as I've gotten older, I just am getting more and more of a passion for birds. And that may be because of my Gullian finches that I have and love. So maybe the finches are to blame. <laughs> but I love kiwi birds. I just think they're the freaking most adorable things in the world. I think that their behavioral habits and their methods of eating, foraging, nesting, roosting, all of it are absolutely fascinating. I just love kiwi birds. So I would definitely have some kiwi birds. <laughs> So thank you. That's a really fun question to ask. Um, yeah, I would love a garden and I would have kiwi birds and I would keep um, oh, What else would I keep in there? I would keep Queen Victoria's pigeons and I would just I would love that uh, But I really I really love kiwi birds. So <laughs> yeah, I would have kiwi birds um, I wonder how many types of kiwi birds are out there. I've never thought about that before. All right, let's buy a few of these Yeah, and then we're gonna go BAM Wham! Take that cactus, grow healthy, grow strong. 
And then we're gonna go wham! Up, 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 up! Flowers everywhere! Look at all of them! Bloom, 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 bloom! Good job, you guys. Let's get that. Anybody else? Anybody else have any? You got a couple in there. There's a little fern not doing so well right here. Everybody else doing okay? Everyone else is doing okay. All right. And let's get these out of here. Ah, so that would be Kiwi Birds. And oh, and Skyback Rider asked, "Who is my favorite superhero?" Really fun question. I actually love uh, Batman, especially Batman Beyond. Uh, Batman Beyond is probably my favorite Batman. And I love Young Justice. I loved Young Justice. I was never sadder than when they canceled Young Justice. And I couldn't believe the reason that they canceled it too. I was blown away by the audacity because the, the people who were behind Young Justice and who managed it have come out and kind of said to the public that yeah, we were getting too many too, the demographics were too skewed too many girls were watching and girls don't buy video like superhero supplies girls don't buy merchandise about superheroes so it wasn't a viable show anymore they had amazing watch rates and they canceled the show because too many girls were watching and not enough of their target audience of like 10 to 14 year old boys because they're the ones who buy the most superhero merchandise and the merchandise is what makes a lot of a show's viability. So man, my cousins, my little girl cousins and I were devastated. We would sit down and it was an event when Young Justice came out every week. And I have seen very, sh very, very, very few cartoons that are as beautifully drawn, well written, up until like some of the rushed parts, mm -hmm. and uh, as diverse a cast as Young Justice was, and I loved it. And if they had sold merchandise for my cousins, like, you know, some of the actual female superheroes maybe, on something more than just like a Barbie, <laughs> like if they had had the opportunity to get a backpack with, um, you know, oh man, oh, honestly, if they had had a Flash backpack, I know that one of my cousins would have been all over that because she totally had a crush on Kid Flash and on Robin, who turned into Nightwing. So, Basically, all of Young Justice, I loved the passion, especially the fact that Lex Luthor and Superman had a son together. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Um, I loved that. But yeah, so I, I definitely love Batman. Uh, I kind of love the X-Men too. Um, not so, not like a hardcore fan of it, but I love the theory and the world and everything behind it. Goodness. So yeah, I actually have, a, I, I, I actually guess... I'm, I'm pretty big into those kinds of things. <laughs> Sailor Moon! Does Sailor Moon count as a superhero? I loved Sailor Moon growing up. Um, it was my first introduction to anime. And looking back and watching it, you kind of tilt your head and you're like, I really liked that? What? But I did. I loved it when I was younger. And, you know, I, you, know, you enjoy what you enjoy. And if it inspires you, it inspires you. And so those are, those are kind of my superheroes. My sister and I used to play Sailor Moon all the time. Um, so that was really fun. I, I really enjoyed Sailor Moon a lot. I'll never forget when I was learning all the crystals through learning Queen Beryl and like Zircon and her forces of evil and they all had crystal names and I thought that was so cool and I would learn about the different crystals uh, because it was like learning about their names. So that was fun and I loved Jupiter. Does Jupiter count? Because I, I loved her as a superhero as well. So yeah, those are my favorite superheroes. What are your guys? <laughs> <laughs> and as usual, it's been amazing talking to you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful, inspirational day. I hope you guys have some heroes out there. Whoever they are, whatever they are, I hope they're there for you. And I'm just going to buy a few more of these and tend our plants. And then we'll be back to answer some more of your amazing questions and talk about some of the really great developments in our community in a little bit. All right, you guys. Like I said, I hope you're having an amazing day. And I'm going to catch this dragonfly. And stay curious. Ah, oh, I got you, dragonfly. I got you.